Bloodstain has a slew of descriptions which don't really help you understand just how great or awful an item is. I posted a link below with a good list of items and their effects, but let me highlight some things I felt were important like bitcoins, important weapons, shards, and familiars. Let's start with crafting. Make sure you craft everything, especially things like food which permanently buff your stats the first time you eat it. Once you craft something, it'll show up in the shop and some things can only be purchased from there. The 8, 16, and 32 bit coins allow you to buy and upgrade some special weapons. They aren't all amazing, and early on you won't have many coins, so I recommend purchasing something and trying it out. If you hate it, just reload your last save point and craft a different weapon. Later in the video I'll tell you my favorite items that are worth getting. Oh, and note that some items like the Traveler's Ring don't need to be equipped in order to grow. They'll passively grow in the background. You can then put them on when they've grown enough to be useful. One last point about items. If you're farming for materials or gear, find the mob that drops what you need and simply abuse entrances nearby. This is a bit boring and tedious, but if you equip yourself with things that increase luck and item drops, it shouldn't take too long to get what you need. Okay, as promised, here's some gear that I want to highlight either because it's so important or confusing. At the start, you'll pretty much just wear what you find from drops and chests. I had a hard time surviving early on, but there was one weapon which blew the game wide open for me, and I literally used it for my entire first playthrough, the Flying Edge. It takes a bit of playing before you can get it, and it's not the strongest blade, but it has this sick ranged attack, and I was desperately trying to keep as much space between me and the enemies as possible. It can be found in this chest in the tower section. It's a bit tricky to get, but I was able to do it with just double jump. Eventually, you can use the flying blade to craft an upgraded version called the Oracle Blade. The bandit blade has a description that says, a sword with hidden capabilities. Turns out that it can make enemies drop items, but only if you perform a special move, and this happens rarely, so I didn't end up using it too much. The red beast's edge can be crafted with an 8-bit coin. When you first equip it, it may look like a dagger. Apparently, it grows based on how many shards you own. I don't know if this is a common bug, but it always started off looking like a dagger for me, unless I paused and then unpaused the game. It then got a serious blade with mad DPS, but watch out! Apparently it has an attack buff that only applies to level 1, the one you crafted with an 8-bit coin. If you try to upgrade it with a 16 or 32-bit coin, it loses its buff apparently. But don't worry, there's other gear that ends up being better than this, like these three amazing weapons. You can craft this gun with an 8-bit coin. When fully upgraded, it offers the most damage of any gun. But I actually like the homing bullets on this gun, which can be crafted with late game materials. And the two best melee weapons for me were the Rava Veller and Eternal Blue. Try them out and tell me what you think. Finally, shards provide some insane power creep and conveniences. I want to first point out that at the beginning of the game, Miriam and Johannes allude to a corruption if you collect too many shards. That's an idle threat. Collect as many as you like. In fact, you even get a secret item, Jeebel's Glasses, if you collect at least one of every shard and then talk to Johannes. You can only find every shard if you fight every mob as well as craft new shards you can't find in the environment. Okay, so what's the difference between grade and rank? Grade increases when you collect more than one shard from an enemy. This will buff the shard's abilities. To increase rank, use the upgrade feature at the crafting station. This requires materials to rank up to the max 9. An important note is that if you manage to get a passive shard to rank 9, then you get that shard as a passive always, even if it's not equipped. This is insanely good, and I highly recommend you focus on maxing rank on all your passive shards as soon as you're able. And if you equip a passive shard you already ranked up to 9, then the buffs stack. Okay, let's talk about familiars now. The Kara boss is kind of useful early on since she can detect secret walls when she gets near them. Otherwise, her attack is so weak, but she does try to use fairy potions from your inventory to heal you if you're close to death. Bloodbringer was probably my favorite familiar when I got it. It changes appearance as it levels up, and this affects its damage should you equip it as a melee weapon. Now, you can't use it as a weapon if you have it equipped as a familiar shard, but you can use a sneaky exploit where you equip the familiar first, then select a shortcut which you uses Bloodbringer as a weapon. The Silver Knight can only reach max grade if you do a second run, since you can't get up to grade 9 on your first run. He stays pretty close to you, but if you increase his rank, he'll get new moves and attacks like the ability to block enemy fire and summon spears at range. Dantelion will buff your strength from time to time, and if you swap him out, you'll retain the buff. He's not that great otherwise. If you want to use the dull hammer heads, you'll want to farm plenty of shards to increase their grade, since you get an additional head for every other shard collected up to a maximum 
maximum of five heads. The Buer I used the least. I found he would keep getting stuck and was never around when I needed him. But you can kind of launch it when you hit it with your own weapon, and if you can position it between you and a boss with a high attack speed weapon, you can dish out some serious damage. There's also a secret archer familiar, and I explained how to unlock him in another video. He doesn't do a lot of damage, but his attacks are relentless, and he can stymie some enemies. Final points before you sub and join my growing channel. Sitting in a summoned chair increases magic regen rate, and this is no small thing if you can sit down for a second. And finally, once you get certain shards like Invert, you can craft the high jump shard back at base with the double jump shard and bovine plumes. This won't consume the double jump shard, you simply have to have it. Click here if you want to learn how to get all three endings, or this video if you want to see some general tips I wish I knew before I started playing.